How do you care for a sick chicken? Today we're going to have a look. G'day there, I'm Dana from Pewakaka Valley Homestead. Over the week we've had um, a couple of sick chicks and I thought I'd make a quick video about how best to look after unwell chicken. I'm going to be honest, I actually forgot that I was meant to do some video recording today. So I've left it quite late. I've spent most of the day wandering around the place trying to work out why the electric fence isn't working. And as it turns out we needed to put an extra earth stake in the ground because our ground is so dry at the moment that the one earth we've got is not actually working. Well, not enough to be effective. Our Kuni Kunis have decided that they can just escape under the fence and if they do it fast enough it doesn't hurt. So we're hoping that we've sort of strengthened that up, tightened it up, lowered the wires down a wee bit and so I'm hoping that that's done the trick. If you hear snuffling and snorting, it's the dogs. I'm sorry, our big dog is really snuffly and snorty and he just won't leave me alone at the moment. So caring for sick chickens. How do you know your chicken's sick? Well, usually you can tell they sort of hunch themselves. They'll often fluff up their feathers. They tuck their tails down and they sort of sit almost, almost more like a penguin. So they tuck their tails right down. You often find them sulking off in the corner. Or the other chickens might be picking on them. Um, they won't be eating or they might not be drinking either. And so usually a sick chicken, you can, once you've spent some time with chickens, you can usually tell if one of them's off by themselves and looking a bit hunchy that they're not feeling so well. We had a couple of young chickens that were both being a wee bit hunchy. We think probably they'd outgrow in the area that they're in. Unfortunately, due to this lockdown, we haven't managed to rehome a few of our chickens, so they're all being held back in the smaller sized houses than what they should be. I have contacted the government department about that, and they've said that because it's... Uh, because of the impact on the animal welfare we can actually move on some of the chickens which is a real relief to us. We've got 50 of them to take somewhere and then that will mean that we can all move them along a wee bit. I also processed some chickens last weekend which meant the younger chickens can have a bigger space which is really good. So now I'm, my shelves are all full of chicken stock and chicken soup and uh, we have more space but anyway these two chickens they were getting a wee bit picked on so we've we put them into a space by themselves. If you find that you do have a, a sick chicken, you want to keep them warm and you want to keep them dark and you want to keep them isolated or at least if you've got two, you can keep them together, but keep them away from your well chickens. So we used our, we've got a, oh, I guess it's called a cat cage, but ours is a really big one because it's what our big dog came in when he flew down when we got him as a puppy. So we put our two chickens in there with some hay, we've tucked them away, they're nice and warm. I put a hot water bottle in with them to keep them warm and some fresh water. The trick is then to keep them separate and until they're back up and eating and drinking and running around like they usually would. Now if your chicken, if you notice, if you've got laying hens and it's a laying hen that's sulking and you notice it's tail pumping, that's usually a really sure sign that it's got an egg stuck. And that's considered an emergency with a chicken. And so if you can, get it vet assistance. If you can't get vet assistance, giving it a nice warm bath for about 15 minutes. And while greasing up its vent area often and then putting it somewhere dark, often that's enough for it to be able to pass it itself. There is a whole technique on helping a egg-bound chicken, which I'm not going to get into here. Um, because it's a whole thing all by itself. And if you stuff it up, your chicken will die, unfortunately. The problem with egg binding is that when a chicken's about to lay an egg, it actually seals off its exit for its poop. And if the egg gets stuck, that exit gets held shut as well. So the chicken will just get a backlog of poop, which, apart from being horribly uncomfortable, can also cause it to become quite toxic and it will die. So it is a really important that if you notice that tail pumping with a chicken, that you get it help very quickly. For normal chickens that are just a bit off their food, there are a lot of conditions that can affect chickens, but sometimes they're just being a bit picked on, they're feeling it not so well. So there are things you can do to help support them getting well. Obviously if your chicken's going downhill and it's n not doing well, getting a vet is really the best thing you can be doing. But there are things you can do while you're waiting for your vet appointment. So we keep them separate, you keep them warm, keep them dry. We put apple cider vinegar in their water. Apple cider vinegar is actually a really good health tonic for chickens. It helps 
um, increase the acidity in their crop which helps prevent them getting sour crop and if they do have sour crop you can add some apple cider vinegar to their water don't give them straight apple cider vinegar because obviously being vinegar it's acidic and it will burn their throat so what you want to do is about a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar diluted into about two liters or two quarts of water and that's usually a good strength that it's still acidic enough to be helpful and help rebalance that natural bacteria in their crop to help prevent uh, to help deal with sour crop and it's also got a lot of good probiotics and stuff that generally is really good for their digestive system another thing you can add to their water or to their food is some garlic uh, we just generally, if we've got an unwell chicken, we'll just chop up some garlic and mix it in with their food. It's a natural antibiotic, it's also a natural antiviral, antibacterial, um, and quite a good thing to add to an unwell chicken's diet. Oregano, or oregano oil, of course, being the stronger option, a couple of drops of that in their food twice a day, that can help. Um, it's, a, again, a natural antiseptic, antibiotic and really quite, can be really beneficial if your chicken's unwell. If your chicken's not eating, obviously you need to see a vet, but if your chicken's not eating, adding some sugar water can be really beneficial to give them the energy that they need to keep, keep fighting. There are a few different ways to make a sugar water solution. You can use powdered glucose, you can use normal white table sugar, you can use uh, molasses. Molasses and brown sugar are both a natural little bit of a laxative so if constipation might be the issue that's the way to go with those and honey being the other option and what you want to do is dilute the sugar in some water so about a quarter of a cup of one of those sugary substances to about a cup to a cup and a half of warm water and stir it until it's dissolved and then you can just feed the chicken there if your chicken's really not well, you can pop some on a spoon and just let them drink off of it, off that. If they're doing all right, you can fill their water canister up with that or put it in a separate dish and just let them have just even just a few teaspoons of that sugar water every couple of hours can be enough to give them the strength to keep fighting whatever it is they're fighting. If your chicken's got a really poopy bum, it can just mean that they've eaten something that they shouldn't have eaten. However, it can mean that they're not well as well. So keep an eye on them. Sometimes chickens will just get into something that they shouldn't have eaten and they otherwise they're perfectly well, but they've got a bit of a daggy bum. If, on the other hand, your chicken is quite clearly unwell and has diarrhea, it can get dehydrated really quickly so make sure you're keeping those fluids up while you're waiting for your vet appointment and hopefully they'll have some sort of solution for you luckily for us our chickens came right within a couple of days we didn't actually get the vet for them because apart from them being a little bit sulky they weren't exhibiting any signs that they were really unwell we think they were probably just being picked on so we fed them up gave them plenty of water and within a couple of days they're doing really well and we've popped them back in with the other chicks if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel where we bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food and other bits and pieces around the homestead. We'll see you in the next one.